Hi, without further ado, adieu, adieu. <laughs> okay, boomers, if you have questions with quality, post it on our subreddit, no matter your entity. I may or may not check it in the next episode of Latitude. Okay, let's sort this a little bit. Rare image of a newly born technician. <laughs> the poor guy is still carrying half of the eggshell on his head. Mom and dad typically put a bunch of vertical antennas around the nest to keep the young safe. I was in four tray. Ow. I just bit my tongue. Ow. <laughs> I was in fourth training today and Mary's heated seat video came up. The whole class was laughing lol. <laughs> Were they trying to design some car heated seats? <laughs> Are they using my videos to design their cars? <laughs> we should be expecting some crashes later. Hmm, let's see if we can find any important information from their whiteboard. Overthinking creates problems that don't exist. Life lesson. Mehdi in his spare time. What's going on here? They are shorting their power lines with their crane. I hope the poor guys up there are okay. Did they not see the wires there before they raised their crane? So many wires up there. Although I think they panicked a little bit too hard. It wasn't jumping to their bodies, it was just jumping to the crane. If it was just me, I would just sit at the corner of the crane and wait for it to blow over. You know, if I'm right and it is 10 kV, it's not gonna jump far. Somewhere between 3 mm to a centimeter maybe. So just keep your distance far away from it and you'll be safe. And whatever you do, don't point at it trying to show it to your friends because it may jump to your finger. But Mehdi, you said it won't jump over one centimeter. Yes, but that's the initial arc. After the arc is made, it can stretch over long distances, like a meter or two, depending on the power available. Can I show you that? Let me see if I can put my microwave oven transformer back together. This is so dangerous. the hell happened? My secondary coil just popped out of the transformer? That... What? <laughs> now I have to try it again. Ready? Why is it popping out? Yeah, I see. It seems like it has been arcing to the core in a couple of places, shorting the coil and the eddy currents were just pushing it out. Let me see if I can add some paper in there for added insulation. Clamp the core so nothing pops out. Now we check for shorts by powering the transformer. Something is burning. I don't think I can use it as a high voltage transformer anymore. Yeah, it arced through the paper. Not the suitable paper for this purpose. I have Another transformer, I think this one is for a ballast, sent to me by Chris Downs a long time ago. Pray for me. Nothing? Oh, my breaker had popped. Try it again. Oh, forgot to connect the wire. Try it again. Okay, it's quite low noise, that's good. Let's see if there is any arcs. What? The voltage is not high enough? Try the other outputs. Hey. Ooh. I was expecting a higher voltage. This is garbage. Let's check the supposed output voltage. 285 volts? This transformer is not high voltage. Pah! Well, by high voltage, I mean 2000 volts. Anyway, I'll just show you what I mean from one of my old videos. We need more power to be able to stretch the arcs. See? For a wider arc, we need more power to create and maintain a longer ionized air channel. 
And now with this, I'll show you, you can create a short circuit between a low voltage, high power power supply using a low energy, high voltage arc. Let me show you what I mean. The voltage across these two wires will be around 250 volts, which is not enough to break across the gap and make a short circuit. And you might be familiar with my magic wand that can create over 100,000 volts. I connect the ground or the body of my magic wand to the white wire of the output. These two wires are of course shorted together through the secondary of the transformer. But it is an inductor which isolates the AC high frequency. So if I send arcs to the black wire, you see, instead of going through the winding of the transformer, the voltage rises high enough between the wires that it jumps across the tiny gap. And now we plug in the transformer. Again, there is 250 volts across those wires that is not high enough to jump across the gap. But let's zap it. <laughs> See? My high voltage arcs from the magic wand create a momentarily short circuit arc between the output voltages that now the transformer can push a ton of current through it and create <laughs> these big arcs that are melting the wires. Basically those high power arcs that are like a short circuit are switches I am closing using a high voltage low energy arc. I think that's used in the industry somewhere. Basically what I'm saying is that yes, 10,000 volts can only jump between 3 to 1 centimeters. But imagine your body is charged to 100,000 volts. In that case, it can arc from your body to the 10,000 volt line. It's a low energy arc but it can jump a long distance. And that is enough to close the circuit for a much more powerful arc from the 10,000 volt to your body which will cook you to death. So you know, don't just stay like a centimeter away from 10,000 volts. Stay a meter or more from 10,000 volts. One of those stray arcs happens, short circuit will be massive. Hey, one afterthought. You saw how those 10 kilovolt arcs stretch and travel? Stay out of their way too. Oh, by the way, I should probably tell you this. Next month is the month Keysight starts their shenanigans, giving away hundreds and thousands of dollars in test tools and equipment. My next video was supposed to be sponsored, but it doesn't matter. I love this event. It's like an educational scope and tools giveaway Christmas. They gave me a link you can use now to register for the event and giveaways. And instead of one event in March, they are doing it in four events throughout the year. And if you use my link, you can win one extra scope per event. So do it. I'll try to remind you more properly in my next video, like this video is sponsored by before EE versus after EE. Can you believe I used to have hair? As long as the unibra is intact, I'm in good shape. Measurement. Hmm, I suggest for more accuracy, push those pins a little bit deeper. Don't. But I bet he has that switch off to be safe. UK plugs, but evil? Ha, <laughs> look at that. You know UK plugs have a fuse in them. But I guess with this, they just turned it into a North American plug. Nothing special. What would happen? Hmm, one charger plugged into another? Nothing. Hmm, let me try it. See, something I learned is that the new USB-C chargers can change voltage between 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volts. And the old ones always stay at 5 volts. So here's an old 5 volt USB charger. And this one has a USB-C charger. Let's plug it in. Nothing happens because they both stay at five volts. See the default voltage for both these is five volts. So connecting them wouldn't make any difference. The device you're charging would have to talk to the charger to make it change its voltage. And they are not doing that. Now you can stop sending me things like this. There is no explosion involved anyways. How to start a fire? We'd had a bit of rain overnight and our matches had got wet. But this wouldn't worry an old bushy like me. I've old got more bushy. tricks What's than a circus bushy? magician. What I've got here is some kindling, some steel wool, and some jumper leaves. Then it's just a matter of touching those on there and you have a fire. <laughs> Why did a car blow up? <laughs> well, it would work if you connected the clamps to the steel wool, not short them together. Just one touch and the steel wool burns beautifully. 
Well, I guess now this guy is stuck in the bushes too. Don't mess with your car battery if you are in the middle of nowhere. Or you'll be just some alligator's food. Here's 240 volt AC to USB-C charging cable. You know, like I said, USB-C output somewhere between 5 volt to 20 volt DC and connecting it to, it seems like 240 volt AC. Well, I know it's for a joke, but if you leave it around, somebody's bound to plug it in and blow up their phone. Just make sure you have a hidden camera recording them. I'm joking, don't do it. True story, getting called a boomer in the sub, <laughs> of course, if you're a boomer, we are in the same community. Getting called a boomer by my own children. <laughs> yes, you don't want to be a boomer outside our community. How to make electric hazard. He just made a light fixture. Well, frankly, it's not much worse than the North American light fixtures. <laughs> I mean, does this look much different to you? It's pretty much the same. Electricity in Poland. <laughs> what does it mean? Hopefully it's not a swear war. Yeah, there might be some disconnect in the wall, but the funny thing is that it might just be the light bulb loose in its socket. Always start with simple stuff. <laughs> I probably should lead by example. So often I see something doesn't work and I tear it apart and check everything just to find out that the power button was off. I put my hand in front of a magnetron while it's running because I'm a stupid guy. Obviously, you know what a magnetron is? It is that device that radiates the microwave energy into a microwave oven to cook food. Am I getting cancer from this? Well, you know, those microwave energies cook food from the inside. So you won't get cancer, but now you can eat your hand, I guess. Stop putting your hand in front of a magnetron. I made a 50 nanofarad capacitor because of Electroboom's video. Lies, it says 50 microfarad. And how did you even measure the 20 ohm ESR? For those of you who don't know, ESR is... What was it again? Erythrocyte sedimentation rate? Resistance. Equivalent series resistance. Because every capacitor also has a parasitic series resistor in it called ESR that can limit the current through it. And it's typically very small, 20 ohms? What did you make your capacitor with? Charcoal? I'm joking, I like it. Good job making a capacitor. Rafa. Hitting a live cable with a hammer. Why? 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 Nobody should be working on any live wire until somebody opens the breaker and there is no power. And nobody should be cutting live wires with an axe. Especially these seemingly contract workers paid by the government. Wasting my tax money there. Can someone explain? Hmm. Funny. It seems like these kind of videos became popular all of a sudden. Of course, if you thought these rocks were generating power, were you living under them? There's just some rocks conductive to some extent and they are connected to live and neutral and the guy is just shorting them. People always get a kick out of shorting stuff. Not me though, I enjoy it. Am I missing something from learning electrical engineering for four years? Or it's some anime? Well, I heard that you have to watch out for static electricity. She's working on a computer or something. So I thought it would probably be safest if I took off my clothes. <laughs> well, it is true. That's why in all the computer manufacturing factories, everyone works naked. I'm joking. Don't peek into the factories thinking you'll see something interesting. If it is electrostatic sensitive environment, people just ground themselves with straps like this. Of course, I don't want to discourage naked workmanship, but it's probably more dangerous to yourself. You can get burned and scratched and stuff. I forgot to record an end for this video, so bye.